welcome. My name is Lauren Karnoff and I'm Montana FWP's video content manager. Joining me is FWP's licensing business analyst, Peyton Schild. This video will outline FWP's online licensing system for residents. The beginning of this video, Peyton will go over ALS numbers and midway through Peyton will go over some new features to the FWP purchasing website. And lastly, he'll go over the different options for receiving your carcass tags and how to check your drawing results. This video is also chaptered, so feel free to look at the description and jump to the category that best fits what answers you are looking for. A few reminders when purchasing your license, all applications are final once they are submitted and no corrections, changes, or withdrawals can be made after the department has received the application. So make sure to double check your information and to have a less stressful experience, get your application in early. Don't wait till the last minute. Most applications open March 1st with deadlines for permits happening April 1st through June 1st. You can find all this information as well on Montana's FWP website at fwp.mt.gov. All right, Peyton, let's kickstart this video with showing how to get to the online licensing system from the main FWP website. All righty, go ahead and share my screen here. So this is just the main FWP website. Um, the address for that is fwp.mt.gov. Um, anytime you're going to come in and buy a license, what you want to do is click on this yellow buy and apply button at the top. And that'll take you to another screen. Um, you'll have to scroll down a little bit. Um, and then what you're looking for here is this uh, gray buy online box. Get your licenses, permits, and more online. If you click on that yellow online licensing button, that'll take you directly to our online license service. Um, and once you get here, this is the first screen that you'll see. Um, there's this is basically just asking about your residency status. The only status that applies to residents here is the I am a resident button. These other four are uh, just for non-residents, so they, they won't apply to you at all. So we'll go ahead and click I am a resident. So if you haven't purchased any licenses with FWP since 2001, you'll have to set up a new ALS number. And the way you'll do that is you'll go to this blue box off to the right here. I do not have an ALS number. Click on that. Here you see there's a form that you can fill out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set up a generic ALS to show you how to do that. Um, we do require a Montana driver's license or photo ID um, to verify your residency status. If your driver's license is new, um, as in, and it, it was issued less than six months ago, uh, you will not be able to purchase uh, resident licenses online. Uh, what you'll have to do if your driver's license was issued less than six months ago is you'll want to go into an FWP office. And as long as you meet all the other residency requirements, um, they'll have you sign an affidavit and they can sell them to you there. If your driver's license is older than six months, um, you can register online. So here's an acknowledgement here. Um, this is just stating that you declare that you are a legal resident of Montana. Um, you've been living here for a period of at least 180 consecutive days or six months. Um, so you want to check that box and continue. So what this is saying is it thinks the system thinks that we already have an ALS number in the system. Uh, which is why it says possible match found. If you know for sure that you don't have an ALS number, you want to click this. If you do not, I'll show you also how to look up your ALS number. So if we go ahead and click that, here's the ALS number the system has established for us. Um, so really all the ALS number is, is this last one to three digits that come after your birthday. Um, and, it, and it's linked to your birthday. So essentially what this means is you're the 89th person in 
the ALS system with this same birthday. Um, there's also an option to email this information to you or print a PDF. You can write it down just however you prefer um, to remember that. It will be your lifetime number. It should never change. So anytime you purchase licenses with FWP, you should be using this same number. Um, and then once the system establishes the number for you, you can go ahead and hit continue and that will take you right into the licensing system. There's an acknowledgement here that shows um, you're um, acknowledging that all statements on this application are true and correct and that you're not subscribing to any false statements on the application. So you want to accept that. You want to choose license year 2024. Our license, the FWP license year runs from March 1st through the end of February every year. Um, so actually currently right now we are still in the 2023 license year. Um, and that will begin starting on March 1st when all of our new applications open up. So Peyton, if you do have an ALS number and you do not know what that number is, uh, how do you go about searching for that? Yeah, so you would want to get back to this um, identify resident screen. And then this other option here, the second blue box says I do not or I cannot remember my ALS number. If you click on that one, it'll take you to a different page. Um, and all you'll need to do is enter your date of birth, phone number, zip code, and residency status, and then select the animal below and hit search, and it'll show you that. Um, I'll go ahead and run through that now. search and there it is um, and one thing to note with this is um, this will not work if uh, you know there's something like your phone number is different in the system or your zip code it's got to be exactly as you entered it um, so sometimes that can throw errors if you do have errors that would be um, that'd be a good time to call the licensing department and they can look that stuff up for you update stuff on the back end um, get you your ALS number if they need to. All right, so we've we've got our ALS numbers. So now um, what's the next step with purchasing our license? Yeah, so if you already have an ALS number, you know what it is. Um, pretty simple. Um, you'll just want to enter in these boxes here, your first name. This is just a, a generic one we have set up. Yeah, and some of the issues we run into on this are um, can't you can't use a shortened version of your name, something like that. You'll probably have your legal name in the system, um, so it's probably going to be under your full name. Um, Just whatever thing your is, driver's license says. Yes, it, and we'll get to that in a sec. Um, it has to match exactly what's on your driver's license. Um, Another thing we run into sometimes is this ALS number um, is just the last one to three digits after your birthday. Um, so you don't have to enter your whole birthday in this ALS number box. It's just those last one to three digits. So we should be good here if we hit continue. Next screen it'll take you to is it'll ask for your Montana driver's license or photo ID. Um, so if you use a driver's license, It'll ask for that ID number on there. Again, this is just a generic number. Uh, but as we hit on earlier, um, some things that cause problems with the verification on this is the name on your ALS number in our system not matching what's on your driver's license. So this system actually uses the, the Department of Justice driver's license database to verify your residency and that your name matches. So if we have a shortened version in ALS name on your driver's license, um, it could cause a verification error here. Um, in that case, you'd want to call licensing again, and we would go in and update your name to match what's on your driver's license, and that should fix it. 
So this is just an acknowledgement here. Um, this is basically just stating that um, all statements on this application are true and correct. Um, then that you're not subscribing to any false statements. You want to click, click accept here. Here you want to select the license here. Um, again, the FWP license here runs March 1st through the end of February the following year. So currently we are actually still in the 2023 license here and that will reset on March 1st when all of our new licenses and applications become available to apply for. So this is uh, one of the new features we're pretty excited about this year. Um, so once you get to this screen, after you select the license here, it'll ask you whether you want to start a brand new order. So this is going to take you to the screen where you can choose from all available items, or this is brand new. Um, if you select buy items again, it will actually show you all the items you applied for or purchased last year. Um, it'll pre-populate all the districts, um, licenses, applications, anything you purchased last year. If it's unavailable, um, like it's not available to apply for or you, you missed the deadline, something like that, it'll show up right here and it won't be available to select. Um, you can obviously unselect any of these if you don't want them. That is so convenient. Absolutely. Like yeah, a really we get a, nice feature. Yeah, we get a lot of questions on things that you purchased last year. I know a lot of a lot of folks out there do the same thing every year, um, so I think it'll help a lot of people out. Creatures of habit sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much the gist on this screen. Um, if you were to go ahead and hit continue, it would take you into this main licensing screen just like you normally would see. But all of those items that you had last year and that you selected on the screen before will be auto selected for you. Um, again, obviously here you can unselect things if you decide you don't want them. Another new thing we have on this screen is um, you can now see the pricing of each item on each screen. Uh, before you had to wait until the end of the application uh, before you'd see your total, so that'll kind of help you make your selection um, on the front end. Uh, another thing that I think will be pretty useful is we have these little eyes next to each item. So if you go ahead and hover over these, it'll give you kind of a brief, uh, kind of a brief description on what that license is for. Um, I think that's kind of helpful to have that all in one instead of having to, you know, search through the website or any other resources that are that are elsewhere. Super helpful. Um, yeah. A great thing, way to budget too. Yep. <laughs> um, we do want to remind you though, even though there are descriptions in here, uh, please check the, regu the regulations for specifics. Obviously not everything is included in there. It's just kind of a brief description. Another feature we added this year too, is we went ahead and we kind of went through the names of the licenses and renamed them. Um, we tried to put the species first so that they're better organized alphabetically. Um, and then another thing with that is we took the categories. So now you can go, these are all the hunting items. This is a subcategory. So these are all the hunting combination licenses. Licenses here, this is anything that you can, these are any hunting licenses that you can buy right over the counter. They don't require a drawing or anything like that. Um, and then if you go to applications, these are everything that's um, going to be uh, issued by drawing. It's kind of convenient. You can either go view all and you can see all these categories. Or if you want to, if you're just looking for hunting. Click on that and then that's broken down into subcategories. Same with fishing. Licenses and applications. So if we continue on, um, the first application it takes us to is our antelope license. Um, so there's a message here. Fields were pre-populated based on your selections from last year. Hunting district boundaries and the regulations that applied to the items purchased last year may have changed. So this is just a reminder to check and verify with the regulations uh, before purchasing, because even though it might be the same 
LPT code that you choose here, it might be valid for something different. So um, just something to verify before you submit your application. Um, but yeah, with the buyout, what I had last year, when you continue on, it'll actually populate all your same selections. So if you want to, if you apply it as a party last year, it'll say yes. If you're the first member of the party, it'll say yes. It'll populate your district choices, bonus point selection, and your block management refund selection. Um, and again, it will pre-populate everything that you had last year, but there's still the option to change this to no. You can still change anything that, that has changed since then. All right, Peyton, so let's show how you can purchase a license as someone who's never purchased anything before. Yeah, so it's the same process up to um, the question where it asks if you would like to buy what you had last year. So we'll do first name, last name, put your date of birth in, and your ALS number. Hit continue. Driver's license or photo ID. You'll accept the acknowledgement. Let's we'll select license year 2024. Continue. Yeah, so if you know that you don't want to buy anything from last year, you just want to start a completely new order, uh, you'll just have this start a new order selected and continue. And again, this will take you to the main screen. Um, the only difference is none of none of the items you purchased last year will be selected, so you'll have to select each one that you're looking for by hand. Um, plan today was to show you how to apply as a resident. We're going to purchase a sportsman combo with bear. So this license comes with a general elk, a general deer, a seasoned upland bird, and a seasoned fishing license, as well as a black bear. We also have the option to do the sportsman without bear, which is just the same exact thing. It just doesn't doesn't come with the bear license. Um, we're going to select the with bear. And then we're going to do a couple of applications. Um, first one we're going to select is an elk permit. And we're also going to do an elk B. So one thing I want to hit on in this video uh, that causes a lot of confusion with some folks is the difference between a license and a permit. Um, so with your sportsman combo, and by the way, residents can buy these over the counter. You get a general elk and a general deer. Those general elk and general deer licenses are valid for the majority of the state for at least something. Uh, what you can harvest with those will vary by hunting district though. Um, so one thing that I like to do when I am applying for for tags and permits is I like to have the regulations open when I'm doing that. Um, like I said, it's going to vary by each individual hunting district what you can harvest with that general license. So like a good example here would be in hunting district 380. If you have a general elk license, it's going to be valid for a spike bull or an antlerless elk during the archery season. And it's only going to be valid for a spike bull elk um, during the general rifle and the muzzleloader season. Um, there's also some with special restrictions and stuff like that. So this one, for instance, would be a spike bull or antlerless elk um, from October 26th through November 17th. That's only for youth ages 12 to 15 and hunters with a permit to hunt from a vehicle. Um, or just an antlerless elk from October 26th through November 17th off of national forest land in the defined south and north portions of the hunting district. So as you can see, that's why it's pretty important to check um, what's all available for your hunting district on the general license. Um, and then basically what, what a permit is, is it either expands or restricts the opportunity. Um, it actually kind of does both in a way. Um, that you have with your general elk license. So for instance here, um, general elk license is valid for these things, but if you want to take an either sex elk in hunting district 380, you're also going to have to draw the elk permit on top of that. So it's used in conjunction with the general elk license 
And in a way, it expands your opportunity because now you can take, you can also take a brow tine bull elk. You can take either sex elk. Um, that's a brow tine spike or antlerless um, in 380. The, and the way that it restricts you is now that you have this permit, you may not hunt antlered elk in any other hunting district. Um, there are some prerequisite licenses that are required um, anytime you purchase either a hunting or fishing license in Montana. Uh, one of those is the conservation license. Uh, we do have two options. You can either do the conservate the normal conservation license, which is eight dollars, or you can actually select to opt out of the twenty five cent search and rescue donation if you'd like. Uh, you can see that one is seven seventy five. Um, so you want to select one or the other of these. Um, the base hunting license is also required for any hunting licenses that you purchase. Um, so we'll select that. And then since the combo also comes with a season fishing license, you'll have to select the aquatic invasive species prevention pass, um, since that is a required prerequisite for any fishing licenses as well. One thing to keep in mind is the bow and arrow license is also a required prerequisite if you're going to be doing any archery hunting. Um, when we hit continue here, it's going to add on the conservation, base hunting, and aquatic invasive species pass. So you don't necessarily have to select them on these this screen. Um, it doesn't add the bow and arrow on automatically, uh, but just know if you're going to be archery hunting, you will have to purchase that at some point before you get out in the field. So if if I had picked the um the combo license without bear and I checked out and I forgot to hit the aquatic or the conservation license at the end, would that automatically be added or no? Yeah. So it'll, if you, if you don't select them on the main screen, it'll automatically add those on for you. Um, the conservation license will actually show up on the following screen. It'll say, uh, it'll have you select between the, either the, regular one or the one where you opt out of the search and rescue donation um, and then once you get to the end it'll say these items were automatically added to your cart because they're required prerequisites okay so we'll go ahead and scroll to the bottom and hit continue and so now this will take you through uh, the entire application process um, the first thing it's asking for and it'll show this right here at the top this is for an elk b license so what an elk B license is, is unlike the permit, it's in addition to your general elk. So you could take one elk with your general elk. You could take another elk with your elk B. The difference is elk B are specific to a certain hunting district or a group of hunting districts, and they're only valid for an antlerless elk. So if we go back to the regulations here, you can see those listed as well underneath the general and the permit. For instance, for 380, again, there's three different elk B licenses. There's one that's valid for the north portion, one that's valid for the south portion, and one that's valid for the entire hunting district. Um, so again, another reason to verify with the regulations that you're selecting the right one. Um, I wouldn't recommend just going off of the code because each one is going to be different for something unique. So the first question when you get here is, it's gonna ask if you wanna apply as a party. Uh, you can either select yes or no. Um, if you select yes, it's gonna ask you for the first member of the party. If you say yes here, it'll ask you to put the first and last name of everyone else that plans to apply with you in that party. Um, essentially what a party does is you can apply with up to five total people in one party, your party or your um, your application will essentially go in as a party number. And if your party number gets selected, everybody in that party gets a license or nobody does. So it's kind of like if you're planning to come out with a group, um, somebody's not getting left out that way. That's kind of the advantage of doing that. Um, if you are the first member of the party and you're the one putting um, the other party's members' names in here, when you get to the very end, it'll send you an application receipt and listed on that receipt will be a, a, a unique party number. 
So you'll need to communicate that to the other members of the party. Because um, when they go in, they're going to say, no, they're not the first member of the party. And they'll just it'll prompt them to put that party number in here. So with this party, when you're doing a resident license, these party members can be out of state. Yeah, they can be. Um, the disadvantage of doing that is non-residents are capped at a maximum of 10% of the quota for that area. So if a resident chooses to put in with a non-resident, um, their the quota for that drawing, they will fall into the non-resident quota. Um, so potentially it could could hinder the odds of drawing a little bit if you do that. Um, but it it is an option. OK. Yep. So we'll go ahead and uh, apply apply in a party just like as if we were the first member of the party. So pretty simple, you would just enter the first and last name of any other party members that plan to apply. And again, this is something that we can't um, add or remove uh, party members at a later date. Um, I would recommend if you're not sure if somebody wants to apply in a party, just put them down. Um, it doesn't matter if their name is listed on here and they don't apply. What does matter if their name is not listed and they do apply, because um, we go in and um, we'll have to remove those folks from the party before the draw. So here's where you'll make your hunting district um, selection. So this first box, this is your first choice. You're actually allowed up to three choices. The first choice is probably the most important because um, we'll go through everybody's first choice first. And then if you don't draw your first choice and we have leftovers, that's when we go to your second choice. It's not super common to draw a second or third choice. Um, so just make sure the one that you are looking for the most is in this uh, top box here. And then again, make sure when you make your selection, go back to the regulations and verify. Um, that's something that you're interested in putting in for. So this here, this is asking if you want to purchase a bonus point. Um, so the way bonus points works at work is they're essentially like lottery tickets. So any bonus points that you currently have uh, will be used for the draw if you select yes here. And actually also the bonus point that you purchase will be used for the draw as well. So if you select yes, you'll get an extra, you'll get a you'll get a bonus point with your application. And all of the bonus points you currently have will be used um, for that draw. The way that works is say you say you currently have six bonus points, you purchase another one. That would give you seven for this draw. Those would get squared. So seven times seven equals 49. And then it also counts one for your actual application. So you would actually get 50 entries into the draw in that scenario. If you were to select no on bonus points here, um, you wouldn't get it. Obviously, you wouldn't get another bonus point with this application, but it also wouldn't use any bonus points that you currently have. Um, so if you're putting in for something that you think is pretty easy to draw, you don't want to use your bonus points. You don't want to buy another bonus point. If you say no here, you could draw your first choice um, without using the bonus points you've already built up. And Peyton, you kind of went, we have another video that I'll put in this description in this video as well, but you go into a pretty good detail of what bonus points are and also preference points, but specifically, I guess, for these residents, what bonus points are relates to them. So um, if you want to go into further information or you have other questions, please look in the description and uh, check out the bonus point video that Peyton put together. So and kind of answers all those Q and A's that people always have with the bonus points. Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of info um, that goes into the bonus and preference points, so I think it'd be a good idea to check that video out. Um, so the next question here is: If you're unsuccessful in the drawing, do you want to donate your refund to Block Management? Um, so if you say yes here and you don't draw this license, 
the refund that you would normally receive will be donated to the block management program. If you select no, um, your refund will not be donated and it'll be actually mailed out to you to the mailing address we have on file in check form. Um, so just be careful with that. Um, make sure you actually want to donate to block management if you select yes here. So now it's asking about uh, the elk permit. Kind of touched on these a little bit already, uh, but same questions here. Would you like to apply as a party? Yes or no? Again, you get three hunting district choices. One thing that's different on these is some of these are um, designated either first and only choice or first choice only. Um, we have a definition right here. But essentially what that means is if you're applying for a first and only choice, um, that can only be your first choice opportunity and you can't put a second or third choice. Any of these that are first and only choice, if we go through the draw and we have surplus, um, they will not be available to purchase later on. Um, they are only, these ones can only be issued through the draw. Um, first choice only is a little bit different. It has to be your first choice, but you can still put a second and third choice. Um, granted, this one here, it wouldn't make a, wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to put a second and third choice because this one is unlimited, 27045. So as long as you have a general license, you will draw the 27045. But if there ever was a first choice only, normally you'd be able to put a second and third choice. It just has to be in that first choice box. And again, same questions. Would you like to purchase a bonus point for this application? Yes or no? Same question, would you like to donate your refund to block management? So this is just another donation. Um, it'll ask you about as you're clicking through. Um, this is the wolf mitigation donation. Uh, the funds are used by the Montana Department of Livestock to contract for wolf management with the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Wildlife Services for flight time, collaring, and lethal control of wolves. Um, same thing here, you can either select yes or no. If you select yes, the minimum dollar amount is one dollar, but you can donate as much as you'd like. So this is just a summary um, of everything that you have in your cart. This one's a little bit more in depth. It'll show you each item, um, everything that it includes. If you have applications, it'll show you your hunting districts um, and then also the total cost. Um, anything that you apply for has a $5 application fee. Um, and these are all added at the bottom line here. So since we have two applications, that's $5 each. That's why it's showing 10 here. Um, but also it'll show your your prereqs, conservation, base hunting, aquatic. Again, these are all things that you need for any hunting or fishing license that you purchase in Montana. Um, and then your subtotal. You can also, if you if you if you get to this point and you see something missing, you can hit edit edit items, and it'll take you back to that main screen. Um, but it'll save all the selections that you you already made in your application, so you don't have to enter everything again. We go ahead and continue. This is going to take us to um, address information. Uh, this is pretty important that we get the right address uh, for when we either mail out your licenses or any refund checks if you're unsuccessful. We want to make sure we have that correct in the system. Um, so if, you're, if your physical and your mailing address are the same, you only need to enter it in here. Otherwise, if your mailing address is different, just go ahead and click this box. Um, and that's where it asks for your mailing address. This question here, uh, do you want your name included on lists provided by FWP to requesters? Um, so essentially what this question here is asking is, do you want to give permission to the department to release any of your contact information to people who request it? Um, so we receive a lot of public info requests since wildlife is a public resource, um, things like drawing results are, are public knowledge. So people can request um, your drawing status and whatnot. 
what you're opting into here is whether you give us whether you give the department permission to uh, release things like your mailing address, phone number, email address. Um, so there's something to be aware of there. Uh, again, just more personal information here. We do require an email for all purchases. Um, if you we'll get to this in a sec, but there's an option to print your licenses at home. Um, we will send the, the link to print that to this email, so make sure that's correct. Um, so you'll it should be pre-populated here if you already have an ALS number. Um, and then it just has you re-enter it here for verification. We do require the last four digits of your social security number. Um, you can see here it's already on file. Um, and it usually stays in our system for a while. Every once in a while it'll drop off. Um, so if it's dropped out of the system, the first time you purchase your conservation license for that year, it'll have you put your last four in there as well. So this is just an informational screen here um, about landowner preference. Uh, for residents, this could apply to an antelope, antelope B, deer permit, deer B license, uh, elk permit or elk B license drawing. Um, essentially, the way landowner preference works is up to 15% of those drawing quotas are set aside for um, applicants claiming landowner preference. We take those off the top, so typically you have quite a bit uh, better drawing odds if you apply with landowner preference. Um, the acreage requirements for deer and antelope are 160 acres within that hunting district. Um, and then for elk, you must have 640 contiguous acres. There is one exception to that for elk B. If you have 160 contiguous acres and have had department documented elk damage within the, the past two years, um, you can qualify for landowner preference for an elk B license. Um, we do have a link here too. Um, if you click on this, it'll take you to the landowner preference form. Print that off. There's nothing particular you need to do on your online application. You'll just apply as normal and then send in the form with your additional documents and then um, licensing will mark it for landowner preference before the draw. So here's our final shopping cart. Um, again, this is really where you want to make sure you got everything, everything right here. Um, we saw this on the prior screen, but it's just a summary of price, everything you put in for your districts, um, different fees and whatnot. Um, this question here, pretty important. This is how you want to receive your carcass tags. Um, so we have three different options. The first option is to print at home. This actually, this option is actually only available um, from a computer. So if you are trying to print from a mobile device, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, we definitely recommend using a computer on that. Um, and basically what, what'll happen is if you do this, once you check out, it'll send you an email with a one-time link to print. That link does expire after five days, so you have to print them within five days of your purchase. Um, and, you, and you can only click on it once, so make sure you're ready to go when you click on that link. Um, Otherwise, the link will expire as well. Second option is the FWP print. And this is pretty basic. If you select this, uh, we will actually print your licenses here and mail them to the mailing address you we have on file for you. The e-tag option is actually a completely digital version of your carcass tag. So if you select e-tag, you won't get a paper copy. It is one or the other. You can either do a paper copy of your carcass tag, or you can do the e-tag. But if you select this option, you'll need to download our MyFWP mobile app and either create an account or log in. And then your, your carcass tags will show up digitally on there. Uh, you'll just have to download them to your device. And then at that point, they'll be, they'll be available for use out of service um, or just wherever, wherever you happen to be hunting. All you have to do is hit validate harvest on there um, and you'll be good to go.
Would it be best, Peyton, for you to download the FWP app before clicking the e-tag option, or can you click the e-tag option and then download the FWP app? Um, doesn't really make a difference either way. Uh, it, it might be good to have it set up and ready to go if you know you're planning to do that. Um, then it's just a quick and easy check. Make sure your tags are showing up and whatnot. OK. But yeah, so the next screen, uh, this is again just going to show you your payment summary and then uh, your billing details. So just things like first name, last name, billing address, city, country, state. Um, put our state in here. And then your email address. And then um, you'll go ahead and hit next. And on the next screen, you'll be putting in your um, card information. Once you hit once you hit submit on that next screen, everything is final. Um, things will be submitted to to FWP. So at that point, nothing can be changed or corrected. So your drawing results are going to be available through what's called the My FWP. Um, now this is the same account that you would use if you got e-tags and for the mobile app. But if you're accessing it from, you probably want to just go to the main FWP website, fwp.mt.gov. And then um, if you're on the main screen here in the top right hand corner is the My FWP login. Click on that. There's actually two different ways you can get in to check draw results. You can either choose to log into your account if you have one. The nice thing about this is if you go through this way, you can see your drawing results. You can register for any lists that are open. You can also check your bonus and preference point totals if you go in this way. Um, there's certainly some more features available if you actually set up an account. But if you prefer to not set up an account, um, you could just go to look up draw results, register for lists here. And this is very similar to the way that you look up here. ALS number if you need to, date of birth, phone number, zip code, residency status. Um, show you what that looks like here. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll take you to this screen here. Um, if you enter just through the lookup draw results, um, the only thing that's going to show is your drawing results. Um, we don't have anything for this ALS number yet, but they would show up here. Um, you can also register for various lists like the alternate list or the surplus list when they become available here. The EHA sign up list and the hunt roster. Those are all accessible through this, um, but the main thing is the draw results. And then again, if you're looking to check your bonus points and um, other things like that, you'll have to set up my FWP account. Well, thank you so much, Peyton. I know that was a lot of information to cover, and I think you did a great job um, discussing a robust uh, topic. But if people want to talk to a special a licensing specialist, um, what other resources is FWP providing for people with additional questions? Yeah, so if any questions still remain, uh, you can always call Licensing Call Center. Um, normally they're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, during the month of March, they will be open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. That phone number is 406-444-2950. Um, you can also contact your regional office. If you prefer to apply in person, that's still an option to um, go in there as well. Um, and then another thing to note is this online licensing system is open um, seven days a week, 5 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. Mountain Standard Time.